There we go. Okay, I do need to make one quick announcement. Um, oh my gosh, move out of the way. There we go. So I still have some folks that haven't done the ISLO assignment. So right now I have Benjamin, Quantrone, and Brandon in here. I know Ben and Quantrone have done it, um, but Brandon, I do need you to do this ISLO assignment. Um, it's not, I know it says extra credit opportunity, so it sounds like it's optional, but it's not optional. It is required by my department that everyone in this class completes it. Um, I just figured that since people are taking the time to do something extra outside of the normal coursework, that I would award some extra credit for that time, okay? So it is worth still 10 um, points for your next test. Um, and I think this week I actually have to turn them in. So I definitely need, I think I have Amaya, Azalea, um, Aiden, Naya, Jacob, and Brandon that still need to complete that. So not even half the class has completed it yet, and which looks really bad on, on these sheets that they keep sending me telling me I have poor um, participation. So <laughs> please help me out <laughs> and I'll help you out by giving you um, 10 points. I mean, it's worth it. It's a whole letter grade increase, right? Um, and I can't float those, right? I think I've mentioned that before. So if one of your tests gets dropped and that happens to be the test I put the 10 points on, then I'll move those 10 points over to another test that did not get dropped, okay? So they're worth, if that's a good, amount of points and then they're worth doing okay, okay um, I'll, so, I'll do it today um perfect. my computer broke my fucking uh, hard drive did it uh okay. yeah the ribbon cable completely uh folded on itself so it's, oh no it's out of commission. gotcha gotcha yeah yeah um you can do it you can even do it on your phone if you're using a phone because okay. when you click on this if you're in Canvas, like either the Canvas app or you're just on the internet using Canvas, um, it's already inside of this assignment. So if you go to step four, like you just type everything in there. Oh, okay. Um, so you put it on a phone. I mean, it'll be tinier, but <laughs> you can do it on the phone. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you so much. Um. So I'm going to start sending text messages. I'll wait until after today is over because maybe some of you that heard the announcement will get it done today. Um, but if not, I'll just start sending text reminders um, tomorrow just to remind you to do it by tomorrow because I need to start turning in my, my results. Okay. Um, Amaya says, is that the ISLO assignment? Yes, yes, that is the ISLO assignment. So it is not an optional assignment. It is required by our department, but I figured I'd give you guys bonus points for the test, considering you're taking some extra time to complete that assignment, okay? Um, for today, last class, we just got through 4.2. And so I, I'm hoping if I can get all of 4.3 done today, then that, that's great. Um, if I could get even just some of 4.4, 4, 4.4 is really, really short, or even all of 4.4 done, that would be amazing. Um, but, you know, we just keep going, play it by ear, and however it works, it works, okay? Um, so let me go ahead and open up my paper. So here's the um, My Notes packet for 4.3. So the first thing that we're going to start discussing in this section is logarithms. Then we're going to talk about how to solve logarithmic equations. Then we'll learn how to graph some logarithms. And then we'll learn a bunch of properties, a lot of properties of um, logarithms. There's, there's like three or four main basic ones, but, but still, we're going to learn lots of properties. So before we can get to any of that other stuff, we have to talk about the definition of a logarithm, right? Like, what is a logarithm? And I mentioned to you in 4.1, 4.1 was all about inverses. And I mentioned that we were talking about inverses at the beginning of chapter four, because we were gonna introduce exponential functions. And then eventually we were gonna introduce their inverses, which are called logarithmic functions, okay? 
So now we're finally in the section where we're going to be talking about these logarithms. Okay. Um, so essentially, the definition of a logarithm is just basically a translation from one equation to another. So normally, we had defined things like this in the past, right? We had some base with an exponent and then equal to some value, okay? If you rearrange this, it can be rearranged to talk about what's called a logarithm. And so this is read as log base B of A, and A is called your argument of log, and then that would equal your exponent, okay? So essentially what we're getting at is that logarithms represent exponents, okay? It's just a weird way to look at, at exponents. So a lot of those rules that we have for, for exponents, right? Like when you multiply two things, you actually add the exponents. When you divide two expressions, you actually subtract the exponents. When you take an exponent raised to another exponent, right? You multiply the two exponents together. So we're going to use those same properties from exponent properties, and we're not going to revise them because they're going to look a little different into what are called logarithmic properties. So we'll see that eventually toward the end um, of this section. For right now, you really have to get practice with swapping the forms over. So this is in log form because you see the log, right? They want you to transform it into its equivalent exponential. And so it looks like they want you to do that for all of these three. And then the three at the bottom, they're in exponential form and they want you to convert it over into its logarithmic form, okay? So we're just practicing um, changing, swapping out those forms. So it's really important that you identify where the things are located, and then you put them where they're supposed to go in the other location. So notice for this column here, I'm taking all my logs and I'm turning them exponentials. So they all look like this, okay? And I have to pay attention to where the numbers are because depending on where the numbers are, that's gonna tell me where they're gonna go when I write it in the other way, okay? So what I like, to remember is the base is the base. That's the one that stays consistent, right? It's the base of the exponential and it's also the base of the log, okay? So the base will stay a base. The other two numbers, notice how they swap sides on that equal sign, right? Notice here the X was with the base in the exponential expression and the A was all alone on the other side. But now when you swap it over, now the A is not alone, it's over there with the base, it's just in a log form, and then the exponent is over there by itself, okay? So that's how I usually write these things. So if I have here log base two, I know it's real tiny, you can't see, but it does say log base two of eight equal to three. So my base here is the two, and the eight is no longer gonna be with the two, the eight's gonna get kicked over to the other side. So the only exponent that I can put up here to have it in exponent form is this three, okay? So that's kind of how we'll look at it, is we'll keep the bases and then swap the other two numbers. So whoever was alone before is no longer the number that's gonna be alone. So same thing for here, this says log, base one half of 16 equal to negative four. So when I swap it to exponential form, the one half is the base, it's my entire base. And then these guys switch sides. So the negative four is gonna go up here and then now the 16 will be alone. So it's really just a matter of putting the numbers where they belong, okay? I have had people have this formula on their paper, and then they'll say, oh, the base is one half, the A is 16, and then the X is negative four. So then if I wanna put this in this form, they just make sure they use the right numbers, right? Base is one half, so that goes there. X goes up there, which means negative four goes up there, and then equal to A, 
and A with 16, so 16 goes on the other side, okay? You can label it like that and then put everybody in the correct spots. I just, to make it faster for myself, I always say, keep the base a base and then swap the other numbers, okay? So for this one, it says log base 10 of 100,000 is equal to five. So when I switch it to an exponential, it's still gonna be base 10, but now the five is gonna go with the 10 and the 100,000 has to go by itself on the other side. Now we're gonna go in the reverse direction. And it will be very important that you know how to swap the forms over because when we start solving equations, if you can't solve it the way it is, you have to solve, you have to switch the form and then see if you can solve it. So when we were doing exponential equations, we didn't see them because we couldn't do it yet, okay? But there were some exponential equations that you cannot solve from the knowledge that we learned from 4.2. But if you swapped it over into its log form, then it was possible to solve. And so we'll see those kinds of equations today. Now here, notice this is the base and then that's the exponent. And then this is the number on the other side. So I'm gonna write log and I have to keep the same base. So I'm still gonna have base three, but it's gonna be base three of one over 81 because now the negative four needs to be by itself, right? Whoever was alone at first is not supposed to be alone anymore. You switch them. Similarly for this one, it wants log form, so we have to have a log. But here my base is a five. And instead of putting the one with this five, you have to put the guy that was alone and then that will equal the one. And remember a logarithm equals an exponent, right? That's the main idea is a logarithm represents an exponent. So your exponent should be the numbers on this right-hand side. We've got one last one. It's gonna be log form. The base here is actually three fourths. And then we got a swap, right? So this is gonna be one and then equal to the exponent, which is zero. Okay. Now I do wanna make sure that you guys write this stuff correctly because I have to grade your papers later and it looks really weird when people do not write the logs correctly. Imagine you have a line of paper, the log and the argument. So let's say I was writing this one, the log and the argument are on the same line, okay? But the base is what's called a subscript, okay? So it's like, the reverse of an exponent. It's not up high, it's down low. And so it's just a little bit lower than the rest of the font for the word log and the argument, okay? So remember, this is called an argument and this guy is called the base, okay? So never write this, log five of five. That doesn't make any sense. To me, what I'm seeing is this. Okay, and that's not what you're trying to write. So you're trying to write that the base is five. So just, I wanted to make sure that people write it down because when you're off doing your homework, no one's sitting there saying, oh no, that's not the way to write it. <laughs> so I'm just trying to give you like a heads up. Make sure you write it as a subscript, not a regular font. The base is are not gonna be regular font. Just like the exponents are not regular font, right? They're real tiny and they're up high. Okay. 
Okay. So let me go ahead and grab another sheet. So now we're going to kind of use that transformation, right, from a log form to an exponential form to try to solve some logarithmic equations. Okay. So let's see here. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit because I know that these bases are really, really tiny. And so they're a little hard to see. So this one, for example, two says log base X, that's an X of eight to the 20, eight of to over 27 equal to three. So it's like we're taking the log of this number, okay? That's the number we're taking the log of. And we've got to swap it over to its exponential um, form. So remember the base, this is the base. It has to stay the base of the exponential, but the exponent is gonna be this guy because a log equals an exponent, right? And so then now the eight over 27 is by itself. And this is actually an equation that we have seen before. So we should know how to solve something like that. We just take the cube root of each side. And the cube root of eight is two and the cube root of 27 is three. Now, right now, we can't check this answer. There's no button in my calculator that has log, but with the subscript. And there's no way to write a subscript in here. I know you have this button to write the superscripts like an exponent, but we don't have another button that lets us write like a subscript, okay? We will learn how to do it. And it's not a button we can use in our calculator. It's actually like something we have to, we have to do a conversion. And once we have that conversion, then we can do it in our calculator, okay? So for right now, we can't check our answers. But once we get to 4.4, .4, we will be able to check our answers, okay? Because the thing is, is if I wanted to check it, I would have to plug in this two thirds where the X was and see if it equals three, okay? And right now we just don't have that, it's called change of base formula, but it's what we're gonna talk about in 4.4. Right now we don't have that formula, so we can't check it yet, okay? Just trust me, we have the right answer <laughs> for now, okay? And then eventually we'll be able to check our answers. And when we get to 4.5, we're going to be solving a bunch of different kinds of equations, and we'll be you'll be able to see that checking process. Okay. Okay. So then now we have this. And one thing that I did not mention, and I need to mention it, so I'm going to mention it now, and I'm going to go back to the previous page to point it out. Okay. Is that this only works if a and x are positive, meaning that your argument must be positive, and then the quote unquote exponent right at the end must be positive, okay? It must be, it must be, it must be, okay? So those have to be positive. Actually, yeah, well, all real numbers, why? So this guy, because they changed the letters on me, right? So I don't like to use Y and X because it gets too confusing when your problems have Y and X in them. So I like to use A and B because normally there's not an A or B. Sometimes I've used C here. It just depends on what letter you want to use. I think it's better to use C so you don't get confused with your X's and Y's in your, your problems, okay? So notice Y was the number that was here. So this is a C. So C can be any real number. C can be positive or negative. Your exponent can be positive or negative, right? Doesn't matter what the exponent is. But um, A, which was the base, we use the letter B. Your base and your argument have to be positive. So this base and that base have to be positive, And this argument has to be positive. 
okay? And we know that if we take a positive number to a negative exponent, all it does is give us a fraction, right? But it's still a positive number, it's just a fraction, okay? So I did not mention that. And it's gonna come in into play later, but it might come into play in this problem, which is why I'm mentioning it. Because look where X is at. X is in the argument part of the log. So when I find out what X is, in order for me to say that that number is an actual answer, I have to make sure that it's not a negative number, okay? It has to be a positive X. So, and the same thing with this, our base should have been positive, but we got lucky, right? It was a positive two thirds. So we didn't have that problem there. So this is the actual answer. Now here, if I switch the forms over, this is the base, right? This little guy right there. And we know this guy is the exponent because logs equal exponents. So we're gonna have base four with an exponent of five halves equal to that argument. And that I can type in the calculator. Four raised to the five over two, it tells me that it's 32. And so far, as long as that, that argument here, right, the number that's gonna go in there, as long as it's positive, I'm good. I can say this is the answer. If I wanted to check my answer, I would have to plug it into the problem and see if I get five halves, but we can't do that yet, okay? Once we get to 4.4, we will be able to check these. And then same with this one, I can't check it, right? Since I can't type that in my calculator, there's no way to tell you if I'm gonna get the X value that I have, okay, that I find. But in order to solve it, I'm gonna have to switch the forms. So this guy is the base and a log equals an exponent. Okay, so the base is 49, the exponent will be X, and here we have the cube root of seven. This is exactly the type of problem that we did last class, where you have to make them match bases. And then all you have to do is worry about how the exponents are gonna be equal to each other. If I look at seven and I look at 49, seven is smaller, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to write 49 as seven to some power. It just turns out that seven squared is 49. So that's the 49 that was there and you still have a power X. This can be written as seven to the one third. Remember that's how you write radicals. You take his invisible exponent over the index. So my invisible exponent one over the index three. And then when we have exponents raised to exponents, we always multiply those exponents. So if this side is really equal to that side and the bases are already the same, then that means that the exponents have to be the same as well in order for that left side to be exactly the same as that right side. And so then we just divide both sides by two and that I'm gonna put in my calculator. So one over three divided by two, and I get one six. And again, I can't check it because I cannot put this in my calculator to see if I get one six, okay? And we say we don't care if exponents are positive or negative, so one six is fine, regardless if it was positive or negative. So we're not gonna do the reflect part. It says describe a process for solving logarithmic equations. Basically what we've been doing is just switching the forms over. Uh, so all these logarithms, we just rewrote them into exponentials and then solve the exponential equations. 
Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the logarithmic function. And we briefly show you some tidbits about the graph, um, ask you to notice something. And then I think we do like one or two problems and then we move on, okay? So the graphs of logs is not like a big, big concept, but we still need to talk about it. So again, remember your argument has to be, or I'm sorry, not the argument. They use different letters. I hate when they do that, but it's okay. <laughs> so this is our base, right, of the logarithm. So our base has to be greater than zero, which means it has to be positive, okay? Now this guy is called the argument and he also has to be greater than zero or positive, okay? That doesn't mean that your Y value won't be negative, okay? So once you plug in this positive number here and that positive number there, it could work out that the answer you get is a negative number, okay? It's a possibility. It normally happens whenever you're, fract whenever you're taking the log, whenever your argument, is a fraction, you usually get a negative y value. Okay, so we're going to talk about these graphs. So you have to pick a base. You can't just talk about the graph without picking a base first. So to use it as an example, they picked the base two. So we're essentially graphing log base two, okay? And then once you have those numbers, then they're making the generalizations for them, okay? So again, we cannot do this in the calculator, but they're doing log base two of one fourth and they're getting negative two. They're doing log base two of one half and getting negative one. Log base two of zero and getting, or I'm sorry, log base two of one and getting zero and so on and so forth. Notice these three points. They are in the reverse spot, okay? And I try to write it down here. They are in the reverse spot than the exponentials. Remember the exponentials over here on the right? You had negative one for X and that gave you the reciprocal of the base. You had zero for X and anything to the power zero was one, right? And then you had one for the exponent and it turned out to just be the base. Notice over here, they swapped them. So notice instead of one comma A, they reversed it. The point over here is A comma one. Then the next point, instead of zero comma one, their coordinate over here is one comma zero. That's the exact same description of an inverse, right? When you swap those X's and Y's, you're talking about inverses, okay? So the fact that all they did was take all the exponential points and swap them, that is why those two guys are inverses of each other, okay? They have that relationship. So, just like the other section with exponentials, basically the domain and the range got swapped as well. So instead of the domain being negative infinity to infinity, now that's the range. Doesn't it go down forever and then up forever? But the domain is zero to infinity. So it never, never, never touches the y axis. It just gets really, 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 really close. Okay. But it does go all the way to the right. So as far left as it's gonna go is zero, but it'll never touch a zero. So that's why there's a parentheses. And then how far right does it go? It does go in the positive infinity direction. This thing is increasing, right? It's increasing if you trace it from one arrow all the way to the other arrow, it's going up, up, up. Um, and there is a, um, what they call a vertical asymptote at y equals zero, or I'm sorry, at x equals zero, which is that vertical line, the y-axis, okay? And then it has the same points as the exponential, but they're swapped, okay? So you really only have to remember that one set of points 
So if you remember this set of points for the exponential, then you just switch them over and you automatically have the set for logs, okay? So this would be for y equals log base a of x. They're just swapped over. They also have another situation where the graph will look a little bit different if the base is one half, right? Um, so if the base is one is a fraction, the graph looks a little bit different, kind of like the exponentials, right? When the base was a fraction, it made the exponential graph look a little bit different. Um, but we just don't have any of those in the homework or on the test or on the final or anything like that. So I just exit out. We don't need to go over it in depth. Okay, so we're not going to do example three. That's all crossed out. Example three. Well, part A is crossed out. That's the one with the fraction. Okay. The one without the fraction is the one we're going to try to practice to draw because you do have one homework problem that asks you to graph and it has a number like that. It might be two, it might be four, it might be five, but it's like this. Okay. So we just have to remember our table. And remember, it used to be negative one, zero, and one for the exponentials. So now that negative one, that zero, and that one go on the other side. Okay. Now your base here is equal to three. So when you have negative one exponent, it gave you the reciprocal of three, which was one third. When you have three raised to the zero exponent, you get one. And when you have three raised to the one exponent, you get three. So those are the three points that we need to draw. So we have, let me do one, two, one, two, three. So if I am positive one third, I might have not put that enough space over. So one third is probably about right here. And then I got to go down to negative one. So the point's probably about right there, this first point. Then the second point is at one zero. So that's right here. And then the last point is three and one. And so I always start from the middle and do my graph that way. And then from the middle again and go down. And remember, I can't touch the Y axis. So it just goes down, it gets close, but doesn't touch it. So there's a whole bunch of other logs that they might want you to graph, but we do not graph those in this particular class, okay? So we're gonna skip page 22. We're even going to skip this reflect part on page 23. It's just letting us know essentially, like if you shift this thing up or down, that vertical asymptote doesn't change. So you could put a slide this up and down all you want and the vertical asymptote will never change. But as soon as you have to slide the graph to the left or to the right, well, that asymptote moves to the left or to the right with it, okay? So that's essentially the only point they were trying to come across here. But again, we don't need to worry about that for this class. The only graph you're gonna ask be asked for is something exactly like this, okay? It's just your base may be a four or a five or a seven or something like that, okay? Okay, so we're getting into these properties. I'm gonna leave this up here because this is a super important one. You'll be given all the properties when you take uh, your test, right? Because you're gonna have your, your notes. Um, but not only do you need to know what the properties are, you need to know um, what's the order to put them in. And I actually put the three and the one too low. 
It doesn't go down here. So there's two things that they'll have you do with logarithms. Oops. Okay. So one thing that they'll have you do with the logarithms is they'll give you one log with a really crazy um, argument and ask you to expand it as to a bunch of logs, okay? And then they'll ask you the reverse, where they give you a bunch of logs all added and subtracted together, and they want you to write it as a single log. So they want you to compress it all together and write it as just one log, okay? And so there's a process that you have to go through when you are expanding it, writing a bunch of logs, or when you're compressing it, getting it to just one log, okay? So when you're expanding it, the first thing that you wanna do is apply that quotient rule. And you can even do both of these steps at the same time, one and two. I'll show you how eventually, okay? So we might do one the long way, then I'll show you the shortcut, and then you could do the shortcut after that. And then once you rewrite using these two properties, then you can go ahead and um, bring your powers down, basically. And I'll talk about these in a minute. When you're compressing, though, you have to bring your powers up first, and then you can put these two guys together, okay? Now, if you're not gonna do them all in one step, then make sure you do the products together first or the sums together first, and then the subtractions together for the quotients, okay? Um, so we'll see what that looks like, doing it the long way and then doing it the short way, okay? Now, remember, when you multiply two expressions together, what do you do with their exponents? You add the exponents together, right? And isn't a log an exponent? So they're taking one exponent plus another exponent. That's essentially what's going on with this property. So here, if you're taking the log of a quotient, well, what happens when you are dividing expressions? You subtract those exponents. So you have the top exponent minus the bottom guy's exponent, essentially is what's happening. Now I say the word exponent, but I don't mean if this thing up here has a little two, that you're just doing two times whatever that exponent is. That's not what I mean, and you'll see in a minute. Now, this one is also cool because remember, if you have an exponent, log is an exponent, raised to another exponent, what do you do? You multiply the two exponents together, right? So it's essentially like taking that number that was here as an exponent and just bringing it to the front like that. Or if you didn't want that number there in the front, then you could bring it up as an exponent for X, okay? Now there's another log property like log of one. Doesn't matter what this base is because anything to the power zero, anything to this exponent zero is always going to equal one. So when you have log any base, of one, it will equal zero. Similarly, if you have log of any base of the same thing, it matches, right? The base and the argument are exactly the same, then it should equal one, okay? Why is that? Because if I put this in its exponential form, isn't anything to the power one itself, right? And so that's why, the, if your base and your argument match, the value is just going to be one. Eventually, we'll use our calculator, <laughs> and then the calculator will tell us it's one. Now, there are some problems on the review and the test, and I think even the final exam that literally just tell you to use your calculator. Okay. So, for these, um, this one's not necessarily asking us to use the calculator yet. I think that's in 4.4, actually. Um, this one says for us to rewrite it, okay? So it's not asking us to like find a number, it's just asking us to rewrite it. So according to that product property, if I'm multiplying two arguments together, then I can write it as two logs with the base six. I just have to do one argument and then the other argument, okay? So a product will turn into the sum of two logs. 
the product of your arguments will turn into the sum of two logs with those individual arguments. Now a quotient of your arguments turns it into a difference. So you get log base nine of something minus log base nine of the other number. And which one goes where, right? You always do top exponent minus bottom exponent. So the top exponent should go first and then the bottom exponent. And when I say exponent, I mean this whole thing is the exponent. So top exponent minus bottom exponent. I'm sure they have more. They're going to get more crazy. Those are just like little warm ups. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, yeah, here we go. So here they want me to rewrite it. Okay. Now, the first thing that I can do is instead of writing um, square root of eight, I can write this as eight to the one half power, right? The index here is a two and the exponent there is a one. And we know that when we have something like this, it can be the exponent over the index. Now, the log property that I'm gonna use is the one with the exponent. Notice how I have this exponent up there and we don't want it up there, so we're gonna put it in the front. So this exponent basically comes down to the front. And so it becomes one half log base five of eight. So notice that my five is like a little subscript, right? Same thing for this one, except nothing is invisible. I have the exponent and I have the index very clearly. So it's log base A of M to the two thirds. And just like the other one, we're gonna take this exponent and move it to the front. So it's two thirds log base A of M. So hmm, I'm gonna do this the long way and then I'll show you, and then I'll basically strike through the middle step and show you how to go straight to the answer, okay? So this is a quotient and it said, if I wanted to expand this out, you have to do the quotient first, okay? So if I'm gonna do the quotient first, then it's gonna be log A of the top minus log A of the bottom, okay? Then you have products. So this part here will become log A M plus log A N plus log A Q. And the second term will be log A P squared plus log A T to the fourth. Now, there's no need for this parentheses because there's no exponent and nothing in the front to distribute. So we don't need those parentheses. However, this parentheses requires me to distribute this negative sign. So it makes this negative log a p squared and negative log a t to the fourth. And then the very, very last thing I would have to do to finish this problem is take these little exponents and put them in front of the log. It goes between the sign and the log. So the final answer for this one would be log a m plus log A in 
minus log a, oh, nope, I gotta write the two first. Minus two log a p, and then minus four log a t, okay? And so this would be the final answer, okay? There is a way to go from the original to this answer without having to write those three steps that I did before, okay? The key is, is that you need to see how many um, term, not terms, how many factors you have all together. So notice that up here in the numerator, I had one, two, three factors. And at the denominator, I had two factors, right? P and T. And up there, I had M, N, and Q, okay? When you expand it all out, every single one of those five factors is gonna have its own log. So you should have five, so I, I'm missing a term here. It looks like I skipped this guy. I didn't do it on purpose. It was an accident. Um, but that will tell you how many terms you're supposed to have. So just looking at that original expression, I can tell that I'm supposed to have five terms, okay? Ah, barely squished it in there. There it goes. Not only that, but if you remember from the product property, it makes it turn into a plus, right? And with the quotient property, the ones at the bottom have a minus. So essentially what you have is you have a positive log for M, a positive log for N, a positive log for Q, a negative log for P, and a negative log for T. So the negative logs only go for the, excuse me, the terms that are in the denominator, okay? And then notice that all the exponents go in front of those logs, whatever they may be. So since P was at the bottom, it would be a negative two log. And since T was at the bottom, that log would have a negative four in front of it, okay? So you can go from there to there. You just have to recognize that everybody in the numerator gets a plus log, positive log, and everybody in the denominator gets a negative log. And then make sure you bring down your um, exponents. So sometimes personally, I may write this step, right? I might just go, oh, positive log of M, positive log of N, positive log of Q, negative log of P squared, negative log of T4, and then bring the powers down, okay? But you don't have to write this step. I just personally would, and then I could write the rest of it, okay? So F looks like a mess. <laughs> Part F is a little bit crazy. And we do have to fix it before we can even start working on it, okay? So for that particular problem, um, we're gonna have to rewrite this as an exponent. So I'm gonna actually move it up here because I don't have enough space. So this would be log base B, and then all of that fraction, that Z to the power M, and this whole radical would turn into one over n, okay? I don't wanna put an exponent on it because um, I don't know what the exponent is and all the exponents are different. So I just put one over n. That's another rule. So if you have this, you can just write one over n. It's just what, I'm, what I have inside the house is like this big ugly thing, right? Then what we can do is apply another property that gives that exponent, exponents raised to exponents get multiplied. So this becomes three over N because three times one over N is three over N. This becomes five over N and this becomes M over N. And then from there, I can do the shortcut. I know that all those exponents are gonna come down and I know that the log for X and Y is gonna be positive because they're on top and the log for Z is gonna be negative because it's at the bottom. 
So I could go straight to the final answer. It's going to be this power log base b of x. It's going to be y's power log base b of y. But because this one's at the bottom, it's going to be minus z's power log base b of z. And that is the final answer then. I brought down my exponents and I expanded it. The two positive logs come from the numerator and the negative log is because of the denominator. I think there is one like this in your, in your homework and in your review. So we definitely need to have an example of that one for sure. Okay, now we're gonna go in the reverse. So for this one was all about expanding it, right? They started with one log and they made you write it into a bunch of logs. Now what they're doing is they're making us go backwards. So they're giving us a bunch of them and then wanting us to write it together as one, okay? Now I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna use my shortcut. So I see a minus sign in here. I see the minus sign right there. Any minus sign in front of a log means that I'm going to have a fraction in my log. Okay. Now the people that have a positive log are going to go in the numerator. And then the terms with the negative log are going to go in the denominator. So notice they all have log three. So that's already represented here. And then this argument is gonna go on the top because it's a positive log. And this argument is gonna go at the top because it's a positive log. And then this argument will go at the bottom, okay? And if you wanted to rewrite that or simplify it, it would just be x squared plus two x over two. But you cannot cancel out the twos. So don't try to do that. You would have to divide both of these by two in order to cancel that too. But it would still show up over here. So be very careful. Same thing for part B. I see that this negative is here, right? So we know we're gonna have a fraction, but remember your numbers in the front go up as exponents. So this three goes up as an exponent. So what am I gonna have? They both have log base A. Because of that minus, I know I'm gonna have a fraction. The positive log has M with the power two. The negative log though has N with the power three. Okay, so minus tells me I have a fraction. The positive log will go at the top. The negative log will go at the bottom. And so I'm taking this argument with that exponent for the top, this argument with that exponent for the denominator. Okay, let's see the next one. Um, Okay, we're definitely going to have a fraction again because of that minus. And this thing here is gonna have to go up as an exponent. And this thing here is gonna have to go up as an exponent. So let's see. If it helps you to do it in pieces, you can do that. You can say log base b of m to the one half plus log base b of two n so the three halves, and that one doesn't have a number. So it would just be log base three of m squared n. But then in order to put them together as one log, all the positive argument, the positive logs arguments will go at the top. And the bottom, the negative logs argument will go at the bottom. Now that 
may be able to simplify, but I think the computer will just let you stop there. So you don't have to keep trying to simplify it. Um, now this reflect, I did have a star on it. It says, can X or log three of X plus two be rewritten as this? And it says, why or why not? And the answer is no, because this, according to that property, is X times two, not X plus two. There is no log property that can take an argument with plus or minus and separate it. You can only separate it if it's multiplied or if it's divided. Then you can separate it into logs, separate logs, okay? You just cannot do it if it has plus or minus, okay? It's stuck like that. Same thing if I would have had log base two of x minus one. There's no log property that lets me rewrite that, okay? If I were to write log something minus log something, that would mean that the two arguments are being divided and not subtracted, okay? So you have to be very careful. And the answer is no, no property allows it. Okay, let's see. We're getting there, we're getting there. Ooh, we still have like 18 minutes, so we might be able to do 4.4. 4.4 is so small. Um, so we're skipping example seven. We're not doing those. Um, there's not one like that in the homework, okay? Not for this class. Um, and then this one is interesting, and we're gonna use this when we get to 4.5 a lot. So it seems really random that it's here, but remember exponentials and logarithms are inverses of each other, which means they undo each other. And so what that means is if I had a problem like this, let's say I had a problem like that. If I wanna get rid of the log base two, all I have to do is apply an exponential on both sides which basically means I'm using two as my base and what was there becomes my exponents. It's kind of like the reverse of that one to one property. Like you start off with this, if the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same, right? But you're doing the reverse, okay? And then a base two and a base two essentially cancel each other out. And so all you have left is that argument X and two to the fifth, whatever that is, I think it's 32. Okay, so it can be used. You can use the reverse ones to cancel. So similarly, if I had log base two of seven equal to X, something like that, right? Um, no, I did the wrong problem. <laughs> so let's say we had two to the power X equal to seven. We know we can't make those match, right? There's no way you're gonna get two to the power of something equals seven. It's just not gonna happen. But what you can do is since this is an exponential with base two, you can apply a log with base two on both sides. And then this base two and that base two cancel each other out and you end up with X equal to log base two of seven. Now that's just a number, okay? We don't know how to find it yet. We will as soon as I get to the next page, okay? Well, not as soon as I get to the next page, but it is in the next section, okay? Log of seven, log of two. It's actually about 2.807, blah, 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 okay? But you'll learn how to do it in the calculator as soon as we get to the next um, section. So I really wanted to get to it so that you could check your answers, right? Remember we had those problems before and I want you to be able to check your answers. 
So we will use this inverse concept when we solve equations later. So there's two things that we need to talk about. And before we can get to how do we put that in my calculator, is the two buttons that are on your computer. You have log and then you have LN. Now that's not an I, it's an L. So if you have to type it in your computer, please do not type in a capital I and then an N because the computer will keep telling you your answer is wrong. And it may be right on paper, but you're typing in a capital I instead of a lowercase L. And so it doesn't understand what you're trying to tell it, okay? So make sure that when you get to this section or even 4.5, that if you're talking about the natural log, you're typing in little lowercase L, okay? Um, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is what does it mean when you see log and there's no subscript, okay? Because I have that button right here, log, but no subscript, okay? What it means is it means it's a base 10. And why is that called the common logarithm? Because as humans, I don't know who this, I, and I know why, it's because we have 10 fingers. Um, that's literally why we count in base 10. Um, but that is where that came from. And so since that's the common base for humanity, that's the common base for logs as well, okay? Um, so for all of these problems, we're literally just typing them in the calculator, for example, one. So we're literally hitting our log button and then typing in 1,000. And this one says it's three. Then we're typing the log button, 142. And it doesn't tell me to round, but I'm gonna round to three decimal places. So 2.152, then log of 0 0.005832. And it's negative 2.234. And the next one, they just get weirder, but it's the same thing. Let me try to get my calculator in here. So I'm gonna push that log button again, but notice I'm gonna type 315 times 21 inside the parentheses, just like it is on the paper. And I get about 3.8 to one because this little five will change that zero to a one. I don't want to scoot over too much. Okay. Then now this one is two separate logs. So it's log of 341, close my parentheses, just like it is on the paper, hit the plus sign, and then log of 15 and close that guy's parentheses. So notice it looks exactly like it does on the paper. And I'm just going to hit enter. And so we get that as our decimal. And then finally, the same thing. This one has a minus sign. Not a big deal. We're still going to do it the same. Hit the log button. Hit the log button. Then 528, close the parentheses, hit your minus sign, log button again, 335, and close. And so we get uh, 0 0.198, since this 5 will change that 7, right? Okay, so all of the common logs you can type in your calculator. And as long as your um, argument for your arguments greater than one and bases between zero and one, you're always going to get a negative number. You don't need to memorize that, but it's just that's how it works. So notice how here my argument was a small number, and so I got a negative response. Okay. Notice here that I had a large number bigger than one, and so I got a positive number, right? Okay, they do use logarithms to calculate pH levels. So um, it says in chemistry, the pH of a solution is defined as the negative log of your hydronium ion concentration. Um, and it tells you that that is usually measured in moles per liter. And it tells us the pH value is a measure of 
acidity or alkalinity of a solution. So pure water has a pH of 7.0. Um, substances with pH values greater than seven are called alkaline. And then substances with pH values less than seven are called acidic, okay? And it is customary to round pH levels to the nearest tenth. So whenever we talk about our pH levels on the next example, we will make sure that we round to the nearest tenth. Even if it doesn't tell us to do that, it's kind of giving us a general rule right here. So here it says, find the pH of a solution with a hydronium ion concentration of this weird number, okay? As weird as it is, you're just gonna plug it into that formula. The formula says negative log of this thing. And you're telling me that that thing is that weird number. 2.5 times 10 to the negative four. As weird as it is, I can still type that whole expression in my calculator. So I can hit clear. Let me try to get this in a good light so you can see what I'm typing. There we go. So we're gonna type the negative symbol and then the log and then 2.5 times 10 raised to the, oops, that's a minus sign, to the negative four get down and close my parentheses. It looks exactly like what's on my paper. And I hit enter. And remember it said to round it to the nearest 10th. So that's about 3.6. Now, part B is a little bit backwards. Part B says that for us to find the hydronium ion concentration, of a solution that has a pH of 7.1. So if I'm looking at that formula, this is gonna become the 7.1. And I don't know what the hydronium ion concentration is, but that's too much for me to wrap my brain around. So I'm just gonna put X for my unknown. Just make it simple. It doesn't need to be that whole little expression thing there. That's like a cat chemical um, expression. But I do need to figure out the log. So I'm gonna have to divide by the negative first. So I'm gonna divide by this negative invisible one in the front. So I get negative 7.1 equal to log X. Now we talked about that, right? When you don't see a base there, when you don't see a base there, you have to remember that it's automatically 10. And then I can do that inverse property that I told you about, right? So you can say 10 raised to this number and 10 raised to this side. And because the base and the base matches, they're gonna cancel, which means it becomes 10 to the negative 7.1 equal to just X all by itself. And I don't know what that is. So let me see 10 to the power negative 7.1. It is 0, 0.0, oh gosh. I'm not gonna try to do this in my head. That's what it is, okay? And this is important because on your computer, it's not gonna take this as the answer. It wants the answer in scientific notation. Okay, so if we want our computer or calculator to tell us scientific notation, it's really easy. You just go back to mode. And then in there, it says SCI. Instead of normal decimals, it's gonna put it in scientific notation. So I'm gonna have to go down and then over to SCI and hit enter. And now SCI is highlighted. And I'm gonna quit. And then I'm basically just gonna hit enter again because it's gonna convert that expression that I just typed in there into scientific notation. So that would be about 7.9 times 10 to the negative eight power. And then don't forget to tuck your calculator out of scientific mode because you don't want all your answers in scientific notation. So make sure you go back to your mode 
and you go down and you highlight normal and then you quit again so that that way you don't keep getting your answers in scientific notation okay so we don't have to have a whole lesson on scientific notation you could just use your calculators functions okay okay so we have one problem here it's kind of like a word problem but it's not anything different than what we just did in part a and b so it says wetlands are classified as bogs fens marshes and swamps based on ph levels or values a ph value between six and seven so between six and seven it indicates a rich fin if you're between um, three and six, it's called a poor fin. And then if it's three or less, it's called a bog. Okay. So those are the three different categories for pH levels. And it says, suppose that you're a hydronian ion concentrate of a sample of water from a wetland is this number. How would this wetland be classified? So we you have to figure out what the pH level is, and then depending on what that number is, it'll tell us which category it falls in. So we know pH is negative log of our hydronian ion concentrate, which is this number. And so I'm just going to type that in my calculator. Negative log 6.3 times 10 to the power negative 5. Get down, close it. And I get about 4.2. So according to that, it's not less than three. So no, it's between three and six. So then that would mean this is gonna be considered a poor fin. Okay, I'm gonna try to cover this in like two minutes because I wanna finish it and it's not very much, okay? That was literally all the hard part of this section. So for four, page 28, now we're gonna talk about the LN button, okay? And the LN button is log base E, right? We know the exponentials and all that and we know E is a natural number, okay? So LN is log base E. Now I'll write the answers in here later because I don't have time to go through every single one. I have like a minute left. Um, but you're just gonna type LN and then second E to the power three. And it gives you the answer, which is three. I could type LN of 142 and hit enter. And it's about 4.9. Five, six. I'll write the rest of them before I post this, but you're literally just practicing typing in using the LN button instead of the log button. Okay, so I'll fill, I'll fill that out before um, we finish. But the last thing I wanted to mention was this change of base formula. So I'm going to write it bigger. If you have log base A, you can change it into any other base you want. There's only two bases that we care about because those are the only two buttons we got, right? It's log like that, where you don't have a base, or LN. Where am I going? Okay. Okay, I think they muted themselves. Okay, so those are the only two bases that we have any concern for. And so that's how you change the base. You have to take the log of the argument over the log of the old base. So if I wanna apply that, I know I already at 1.30, I'm just gonna do these last two problems and then we're done, okay? So if I wanted to do log base five of 17 in my calculator, right? you're basically going to do ln of 17 over ln of 5. And you can do that in your calculator. ln of 17 over ln of 5. 
and it tells you it's about 1.760, okay? So you will be able to check those answers that you had before. Same with this one. It's log base two. So when I convert it, it would be ln a 0 0.1 over ln of two. ln of 0 0.1 over ln of two. And that's about negative 3.322, okay? So that's the big idea for 4.4, is that even though you don't have the log base two in your calculator, you can do the LN and still be able to figure it out, okay? I know I ran out of time, but if anybody has any other questions for me, let me know. Um, I will post these and I will post that one page with all the other numbers worked out. And I might even stay and hang back and uh, record that part just in case anyone wanted to go back and finish it, okay? But other than that, you guys have a good weekend. We will put all this stuff together when we work on 4.5 in the next class, okay? Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, so for this one, is the one I'm going to do ln of 0 0.005832 and we get negative 5.144. Here we're doing ln of 98 over 16 and we're getting 1.812. Here we got two of them with a plus in the middle. So ln of 41, make sure you close it, plus ln of 98, and I get negative 0 0.871. And then finally this one down here, but it has a minus. So clear that out, ln of 92, close parentheses, minus ln of 18. And I get 1.6. Three, one. Now these are nice, they're super simple. You're just using your calculator, right? Um, the cool thing is, is that there is a couple of these ones with the calculator in the review, the test, and I think even in the final exam. So as long as you know how to use a calculator to put these LNs, um, you should be able to get some points in that um, with those. Um, but that is it. And I will see you in the next class.